In this video, we'll be discussing the problem subsets. Previously, this problem has been asked in a lot of product based companies. So you'll be given an array of integers and you have to find all the subsets for that given array. So let's say if you have been given the array as one, two and three, then the subsets can be either it can be an empty subset or it can include just one element. It can include just two. It can just include three or it can include one and two. It can include uh, one and three or it can include two and three or it can include all the elements that is one, two, three, right? And notice that you will not consider two and one and one and two is different because you are talking about subsets and not about permutations, right? So how do you do this particular problem? So basically you have to generate all the subsets for this particular problem. Now, what you can see is that when you are at a particular element, so you have the choices to either select this uh, particular element or not select, right? So this problem is an important and it has been asked in Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter and ByteDance. So let's see how you will generate. So let's say you have the array that is given to you as one, two and three. And what you have is you have choices, right? So for every element, you have a choice. Either you can include it into your answer or you can not include it, right? So let's say you are at the very first element that is this one element, right? The very first element that is one. So what you can do is either you can include it or not include it, right? So let's say if you include this particular element, so what happens is if you don't include, then the set will remain empty. If you include it, then the set will become one, right? Now, let's say that you, after this particular element, you move to the next element. Once you move to the next element, so you have two choices. Either you include this particular element too, or you don't include it. So if you don't include it, right, if you don't include it, then the set still remains empty. Or if you're here and you include it, so the set becomes two, right, subset. Now, from here also, either you can include two or not include two. If you don't include, then this remains one. If you include it, then the set becomes one comma two, right? Now, when you move to the next element, this is three, so either you can include it or not include it. So if you don't include it, so the set remains empty. If you uh, include it, then the set becomes three, right? After this, what can happen uh, when you are at this two, right? So either you include it uh, or not include it. If you don't include it, then the set remains two. If you include it, then it becomes two comma three, right? Similarly here, if you uh, include, uh, if you don't include, then this remains one. If you include this three, then it becomes one comma three, right? Similarly here, if you include it, so it becomes one comma, uh, if you don't include it, it becomes one comma two. If you include it, it becomes one, two and three, right? So what we are doing at each step is that suppose that uh, you are currently standing at a particular index i. So what you are doing is either you are including that particular element, that particular index, right? Or you are not included in, right? So these are the two choices. So for every element, for every element, you have two choices, right? And you have total n elements. So for one element, if you have two choices, so that means for uh, n elements, right? For one element, you have two choices. So for uh, for every element, you have two choices, right? So there are uh, there are basically here are three elements, right? So for the first element, you have two choices. For the second element, you have two choices. For the third element, you have two choices. That is either to include or not include. So that means two to the power three. That is, uh, if there are total n elements given to you, then you will have two to the power n, right? So that's what you have to observe in this particular problem. Now, how to do this particular problem? So what you can do is, like as we discussed, let's suppose that you are currently at a particular index. So either you can think of including that particular index or not including. Let's try and see. So let's suppose that you are currently at this particular index. That is the very first element you are at. So if you are at this element, so either you can include it or not include it. So initially what you will do is you will take an empty vector, right? You will take an empty vector that will not consist of any elements. And what you will do is uh, you will uh, move as a particular index, right? So you'll have a final result that will be storing all the subsets. When will you store the subsets? So you'll store the subsets when your i hits, uh, when your i gets out of the uh, bound, right? When your all the elements are traversed, like when you traverse all the elements, so these are the subsets that you will be getting. So you'll be storing them one by one into your answer. And notice that uh, in this question, uh, you have been mentioned that you have to return the answer in sorted order like 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, then 1, 3, then 2, then 2, 3 and 3, right? So you have to return it in sorted order. Uh, so that is something that you can do in the end. Now, let's say that you are at a particular index, I, right? So if you are at a particular index, if you are suppose at this particular index, right? So what you can do is uh, currently your uh, subset will be null, right? So what you can do is, let's say if you uh, if you don't include it, right? So if you don't include it, then your set remains empty, right? After this, what happens is you will move to the next index, right? From here, from this particular situation, you will move to the next index. Now, from here also, either you can include two or not include two. If you don't include two, then you move to this index. Now you move to three, right? So either you include three or don't include three. If you don't include three, then this is the set you get, right? Once you get this particular set, so what you can do is you can uh, directly insert it into the final set that will be the subset of all, like that will contain 
all the subsets that you have generated right after this what will happen is uh, let's say you uh, had done this right if you are were here right if you were here so now you have a choice that uh, let's say you are here right you are here one time you have, you have seen that you have taken three uh, you have not taken three now if you take three so three is getting added in your subset and now you move out of bound right so when when you uh, once you have iterated all the elements so what you do is you in, uh, you insert this particular element into your set now let's uh, try and figure this out let's try and figure a situation uh, let's say what you do is you added the first index you did not include right you, you did not include now what happens is you come to the second uh, element right you come to the second element you include it then what happens is you move to this two now uh, now your uh, situation is this right so what you do is let's say you move to three then what happens is you either include two or uh, like you either include three or don't include three if you don't include three then you move to this element two right if you if you uh, do this right but if you include it so it, it becomes two and three right so you'll be checking for both the cases you will be inserting after you do this like after you move out of bound then you will be again inserting right now let's say what is happening basically is you have to consider all these things and basically uh, like every time you are changing your subsets as well why because let's say you have done this let's say you have tra done traversal for this then when you are moving back when you are moving back so basically when you are iterating so you are popping out uh, the current element that you had inserted let's say you let's say you were here so when you move out when you move back so you are uh, basically removing this particular element from your set as well right but when you move back from this like 2 and 3 so when you move back so you are uh, removing this element 3 as well right so that is something that you need to notice uh, so let's quickly try and write the code for this particular problem so basically what you will be doing is uh, you will be given a function that will uh, be uh, having vector given to you so what you have to do is you have to uh, write a code such that you have to generate all the test cases uh, all the subsets of the given set and what you have to do is you have to return the answer in sorted order right so what you will be doing is let's say you have a vector nums you declare a vector nums right you will declare a vector int nums basically first of all and then what you do is you write a function let's say you write a recursive function and what you do is you pass in it the array you start from the 0th index and you pass the nums right after this, this is done so this will be the recursive function that will be doing like either you select for the ith index or you don't select the ith index right in the end let's say you have a resultant uh, let's say you have a resultant vector right or let's say you have a resultant vector that is named as answer so you'll be sorting this particular resultant vector right uh, that will be considering order subset so what you will do is you will do answer uh, dot begin uh, sort answer dot begin uh, and answer dot end right so that will give you the sorted uh, subsets in this case and in the end uh, definitely you will return the answer now let's try and see what you will be doing let's uh, declare a public uh, answer right uh, that will keep, uh, contain vector of vectors so i'll declare vector of vector int right now what i'll have is i'll have answers right so this will uh, contain all the answers for the given test case after this is done so what i'll do is i'll have this void function i'll have this void recursive function wherein what i'm doing is i'm having the vector int uh, a right so i'm passing it by reference then what i'll have is i'll ha i'll be at the current index i and another thing that i'll have is i'll have vector int ampersand nums that is the current uh, current subs uh, subsets whether i have taken a particular element or not that is stored in the vector right so what i'll what i'll do is if let's say i is equal to a dot size right if i is equal to a dot size so in that case what you can say is if i is equal to a dot size uh, so that means that if my i has reached to the end of the array so if i has reached to the end of the array in that case what i can do is i can definitely say that i can store the answer so i can say that result dot push back so i'll push the current subset that i have generated into my answer so what i'll do is in, uh, result dot push back nums right so i'll directly insert it and i'll return from this particular recursive call otherwise if i haven't done it if i have not uh, done this so what i'll do is i'll call the recursive function and what i'll do is i'll pass the vector a i'll call for the uh, next i plus one and i'll call for this vector nums right so this is the case when I, i'm considering uh, that the current element is not added right suppose that i have i have not considered the current element so in this case current element a of i is not added right not added to the set right after this what i can do is i can uh, let's say i add it right so if i add it so i'll add it in the nums so i'll say nums dot push back i'll say nums dot push back nothing but a of i so if i add it right so if i add it then i'll try to call a recursive call right so i'll call for what a comma i plus one comma nums right so i'll call for it now in this particular case when i am calling this recursive call so this is when current element a of i 
is added right is added to the set so if i add it then in that case i am considering it right so once i have done this so while i am back backtracking so what i need to do is i need uh, once i am backtracking so i need to pop it out as well so what i'll do is while i am backtracking so as i mentioned here uh, let me uh, show you here like uh, while i was coming from here while i was let's say coming back from here so if i was coming back let's say from uh, this particular recursive call right so if i am coming back from here so i was popping the three out right so that when i come here back from here like so you can see right so i was popping it out like when i came back from here so i was popping this three out so similarly you have to also do right so that is what uh, backtracking means here and what you will do is you will do num dot pop back not right pop back so this will pop, pop out the back element and this is nothing but the process of backtrack right so this is the process of backtracking that we are doing now what you need to do is uh, you need uh, once this part is done right so you can write a public here so once this part is done so basically what you will be doing is uh, first of all you are considering that you are not including the ith element that is a of i if you are not including and including it and moving to the next element or if you are uh, including it in so you will add it in your nums and then what you do is you basically move to the next index and now while you are backtracking so you pop it out right so this is the way that we'll be doing it uh, let's try and compile this particular code and see whether it's working or not it's getting compiled so currently it seems to get compiled yeah so let's try and submit this code and see whether it's working or not so you can see that it got submitted uh, so basically in this particular problem you just had to generate all the subsets uh, like this and one more thing that you need to remember is uh, since for every element since for every element i am having two choices right so if there are three elements then i had two into two into two for every element i had two choices either i included or not included so if there are three elements then uh, my time complexity was two to the power three but if i have n elements so the overall time complexity will be order of two to the power n right time complexity but in terms of space complexity that space complexity will be order of two to the power n into uh, the number of subsets right that is one thing that you need to remember in case if you have any doubt so you can mention that in the comments and if you like this particular video so you can uh, consider to like it and subscribe to the channel as well thank you